Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to show you how to build a 24 by 24 bare bottom reef tank and a transfer of my previous 15 gallon mixed reef tank. So I bought this tank on Kijiji for $200 stand included, so that was a bargain. The only thing was that I wasn't sure if it was tempered glass or not. Because of the drilling that I needed to do in order to connect my sump, so I decided to do a drilling test with one of the parts of the glass lid, also included by the way. There's a lot of people that claim that glass leads prevent the full spectrum of your lights to be provided for your corals. Because of the evaporation of the water, the glass can get stained, so having a lid is personal choice. But for me, it was necessary because of some of the fish that I was thinking to add. There are well-known jumpers such as green crummies and some of the grasses actually. A lot of fish do jump when under stress and when being chased by a bully. Would you waste those 80 bucks worth of fish? So after testing with my tank lid and making sure that indeed it wasn't tempered glass, I decided to start drilling on my tank. Here you can see I'm using a template that was already included from the eShop Overflow box. I got the medium sized ones that also include the drill bit, so you only need your own drill. It is really important to follow a few steps in order to get a really clean drill cut. So these are the steps. Number one, make sure that the template is really well attached to the surface you're going to drill. Number two, you gotta tape underneath the location that you are drilling. This is to hold the piece from falling over the other side of the aquarium. You can also place a towel just in case. Number three, you need water at hand in order to stop the glass debris from flying all around the place. It is also to cool down the glass. Number four, I can't stress enough how important it is to take your time while doing it. There is no rush or time timeline and please don't use too much pressure while doing it and by following these few steps you can ensure a really clean cut without chippings. Overflow box placement. The only important thing about this is the placement of the gaskets. Both of them goes in between the glass and the overflow box. Anyway, it has a very self-explanatory user manual guide included in the box. Now the return line. I drilled the hole really low because I thought about adding a check valve, but by that time I didn't knew it was a little bit expensive, around 25 bucks, and if you drill it almost at the same level than the overflow box, you are not gonna need the check valve anymore. Next, the coating. I decided to paint just the back wall and the bottom one because of the placement that I was going to give to the tank, but you can choose if you want to paint any other wall. For the paint, I went with this 1K black high build, but everybody in the hobby uses plastic dip because of the way it dries and how easy it is to peel it off the glass. You have to do 3 passes and wait at least 10 minutes in between each layer. That will give a strong blackout. Don't forget to tape cardboard to the walls that you don't want to paint over. Try to tape every gap that you can see and you have to cover the holes that you previously drilled from the other side of the glass in order to prevent the paint to go inside. Here I'm just cleaning the bottom of the tank because of course there's tons of debris from the previously drilled glass. Now building the sump. For the sump I used a 10 gallon tank. I would recommend to use a little bit more larger sump if you have the space available. That will prevent a lot of space issues in your sump. Regarding if you're opting to have a skimmer or any other reactor, I decided to go with a small one because I didn't have enough space inside the tank stand that I was going to use and I also have a lot of time to make test every time that I need to do it. I also do weekly water changes, make sure you are able to get the sump out of the tank stand if needed, just in case some something goes wrong with it. There is a specific silicone meant for tanks, but you can actually use any kind of waterproof silicone. For the divisions, I used the black acrylic that I got for, from Amazon. I specifically asked for the black one because you don't want any light going anywhere but the refugium chamber. This is to prevent algae issues. 
Now the tubing. You need to do it with the less head pressure as possible. Head pressure is a measurement of the height difference between the fluid being moved and the discharge point. You have to draw a diagram of your tubing system and then you have to measure the tubes. Once you measure them, cut them at the previously drawn measures and then try if everything fits before gluing it. If everything is okay, then clean the inner and outer parts of the tubes and tubing fittings. After that, you're good to glue everything. Then leave it drying for 24 hours before the leaking test. It is always going to leak, so don't be alarmed about it. For the water that you're going to use for the leaking test, you can use the water from your roddy system, the wastewater, because keep in mind that making roddy water gives a lot of wastewater also. Okay, so now I ask one of my roommate's Alan to help me put everything upstairs in my room. Make sure to use a leveling mat for the aquarium and to properly level your stand before setting everything up. Now I'm setting everything up to do the first leaking test. By now I have already the 70 gallons of roddy water filtered so I proceed to fill the tank up. This is what I meant about using the roddy waste water for the leaking test because I used the roddy water for the leaking test but I could realize that there was a lot of debris and pollution in my water so I had to run it up and put filter flaws before adding the salt to it. So now I'm realizing about the few leaks and getting ready to fix them. For the fixing, you can use cyanocrylate, but you have to spot the exact leak spot and use a lot of it. That's going to dry and get really hard, and with that, the leak is going to be fixed. If the bulkheads are leaking, try to tight them a little bit more with a wrench, but don't go really hard because they can break. After fixing all the leaks, you can proceed to add the ruddy water. Then you can add the salt, and the amount of salt is going to vary depending on the salt mix that you're using. For me it was one of these purple cups for each five gallons of water. Make sure to add a power head to help the salt to dissipate faster. You have to wait around five hours for it to give real readings. At this point you can also add the heater into the sump. An ideal temperature will be from 75 to 78 Fahrenheit and salinity readings of 34 to 35 parts per thousand. So now I'm measuring the salinity. If you don't know how to do it, we have a video regarding how to use a hydrometer. So this is a piece of rock that I was going to add to the existing ecosystem and I am adding a random flow generator to my return line. So now, in order to keep the nitrates at a proper level, I've been saving for the last month my dirty filter floss from the 15 gallon tank and have been using them to feed the bacteria that I was propagating in order to seed it for the new biomedia that I was going to use for the new tank. Make sure you to use all of the water from the previous tank so the parameters won't shift that much. The corals, you can just transfer them from one tank to another and they will acclimate just fine. But for the fish and the inverts, they need a proper acclimatation. Specifically the snails, they can die from any subtle change in the water. You have to give them a proper acclimatation. In here, I wanted to remove the Acropora Jungay because I was meaning to frag it uh, because I find it very easy to thrive and that's going to fill up space in my aquarium really fast. So I used the bone cutters to do the job and once I finish doing it, the rock goes straight into the tank.
Now I'm gluing some of the corals to the new rock that I just recently added. Now it's time to catch the fish, it is a pain in the butt I know, but when you do it you have to place them into a bucket and do a proper acclimatization with the new water that you're going to use from the tank. And now I'm adding the water that I was using to cycle the biomedia during one month. So now you're able to free the fish and start everything. So this is the result after 3 months. I cannot lie that there were some problems, but nothing that couldn't be fixed. What I can really recommend is waiting for the first month without doing any water changes, but you have to test every week at least to make sure your parameters are in check. After that period of time, you can start doing small water changes every week. For example, for this 70 gallon, I make weekly 5 gallon water changes, and that helps me keeping everything stable, but I'm still dosing calcium and alcohol alkalinity every day and I also test all parameters every five days. Over the last two months I've had low nutrient problems so I added a school of six green crummies to my tank and with this I have a lot a total of 12 fish in this tank and the parameters seems to be stable back again. Thank you for watching please like and subscribe let me know in the comments any topics that you would like me to speak about and follow me on social media link on the description see you later